Hi, I'm back or welcome. My name is Jasmine Pickens. I work on the affirmative side of answering the critique. The purpose of this is to be a crash, a crash course um, dialogue and perspective on what effective two ways do in order to um, beat the K. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So I provided a roadmap for the negative, so I'll provide a roadmap for the 2AC. So it is important that the affirmative goes into the debate with a roadmap that highlights the affirmative strengths. The parts include the affirmative specific internal link chain plus the impact framework, indicting the negative theory, link defense and offense, the permutation and alt offense. Of course, alt defense too, um, but we'll get more into that as we go throughout this slide. So I move my face so that you can see all the parts here. Is F and parts are the best defense and offense for the affirmative. In terms of defense, your impacts are real and imminent without the plan. And it doesn't change because of the criticism. And that's something really important that I think that two A's need to uh, realize and really kind of uh, own in on is that you have your affirmative, regardless of whatever the negative says, the more vague and immaterial and kind of um, structuralist the, or post-structuralist um, the critique becomes, the larger the advantage that you have is because the affirmative has made a very staunch and material defense of how it is you solve for a particular and specific impact. That's going to matter because the way in which the negative is going to be able to generate offense is going to be through more holistic, large scale framing link arguments that might not be as specific to the affirmative. And so the specificity of your internal link chain is going to be your biggest asset. Now, offense. The alternative doesn't solve the impact means that this is a disset to endorsing the critique. Absent an alternative to resolving this very real and imminent impact that the affirmative has isolated, it means that it becomes either A, try or die for the affirmative, or B, that any risk that the affirmative is a pedagogically, or any risk that the impact is something that is bad and that the alternative allows to continue and the affirmative is winning that that impact is bad, it becomes almost pedagogically irresponsible to not create strategies that try to resolve that impact that allow this bolsters kind of uniqueness or significance for um, the affirmative because it's like the imminence and truth of our impact is guaranteed and that is not something that will change either with the introduction of the criticism and it's not something that has provided any kind of solvency or counter way of viewing it via no alternative solvency. Now, the F, I'm gonna move my face over here and do a lot of moving around. Framework. Um, so the F should get to weigh its impacts versus an alternative. Remember, your impact is imminent and real. The K does not change that. Discussions centered around strategies for resolving an impact are valuable and fair potentially predictable, have portable skills um, attached to them because we're dealing with very, um, a very uh, timely discussions about the world. This is criminal justice reform. And so these are very timely discussions on impacts that are happening that we have a role, an obligation to resolve. The question is, which side of the debate provides a debatability, and I'm going to say that word quite a bunch, but a debatability that allows for a kind of intervention to how issues are created and how we can resolve them or create a good model for resolving them. The affirmative is going to argue that it is through specific analysis of, you know, policies and looking at their effects and creating a model through which the affirmative is able to defend that internal link chain versus, you know, any argument that allows for this robust debate in pedagogy to be realized. 
Now, the role of the ballot is to exploit a negative lack of modeling arguments. Something that I brought up during the going for the critique argument is that a lot of the times the role of the ballot are giving jurisdiction to the judge for what the referendum on um, value creation or the refusal or whatever the alternative looks like it is, what that means in the context of what the ballot can do, what it uh, signifies, et cetera, et cetera. And so you're exploiting the negative lack of a modeling argument and judge evaluation by giving a clear cut way where at least the affirmative is able to provide some texture and contestation right to the assumption that there is nothing that can be done or that there is no value in debating uh the 1ac on defending and having the 1ac in response to the criticism so indict the negative theory so even if the negative is right about the world does it materially change the f's impacts in the round does it change the AFS impacts outside of the round? This is the question that should center the AFS orientation to the theory and ontology debate. Your impacts are imminent. The likelihood that how the affirmative has prevented itself is, is able to resolve said impact or there's no alternative um, that can be tested that would resolve the similar impact, which means that we need to risk, you know, the chance that the affirmative is able to solve. I said that earlier, but these things should really frame how you're thinking about the ontology, psychoanalyst, post-structuralist debate. Now, I said debatability was coming back. Debatability has entered the chat. The debatability of the affirmative disproves the negatives. Since the F has a specific internal link and critique is broad in scope, the threshold for the negative should be high to win on the truism of its theory. Even if the negative is right in the larger context of the world, what does that offer in the context of debate and as debaters having discussions um, for you know, what is a pedagogically valuable tool for dealing with the world. The affirmative, in my mind, has offered a tool for dealing with the world. The plan text might be something that you are attached to, but your ability to have the affirmative to defend it is something that is separate than what the theory of what the negative is reading against you applies to. And so you have yourself and the nature of debate being innovative to utilize why the affirmative disproves the negative theory. Additionally, is that you need to substantively engage the theory and connect it back to the affirmative and the lack of an alternative to resolve an impact. This will justify taking a risk on the app, even if it's imperfect. So you need to engage the critique. At some point, you're gonna have to go into the other side of the literature base and at least understand what is the premise of what the critique is talking about and trying to find straw mans, find fallacies, find something that is inconsistent and explain why that is different from the affirmative or why um, there's no way out of that or that there needs to be some type of bright line that's enforced in debate, right, for what the affirmative should be accountable to if it is true that there is a lack of an alternative or lack of a way out that is nothing than just embracing that failure or embracing that pathology. Why can't the affirmative also read the plan text and have the access to the impacts and have those discussions. Ways to think through this theory. The world might not be good, but the affirmative is. It's a good TLDR of some of that. So link defense and link offense. You want your no links, you want your link turns, you want your the critique, it's just a linear disset in disguise. Moments, how much worse can the affirmative make the world? So answer to theory links. I made a distinction in my negative lecture about theory links versus function links. So theory links. Indicts of the negative theory should lower the threshold of accepting these links wholesale. Either the negative analysis 
lacks specificity to the case or the negative specificity doesn't overcome the value of debating your impact, right? So that's all the debatability stuff that I brought up, but also that if the critique applies to just kind of any affirmative, any kind of arbitrary kind of um, moment of humanism, as an example, right? Then it might not be specific enough to create a threshold of what it would look like to either A, not operate within that logic, B, deny some of the benefits of operating in that logic, or C, uh, reveal the ways in which you can be dissident while operating within humanism, for example, right? And so kind of linked defense shows the inability to ever be able to move outside of that, the incompleteness of the affirmative or the negative attempt to attach it to the, uh, or the negative to attach it to the affirmative. And then C is just how you can turn that as an advantage to how the affirmative is different than the world and able to rectify it, right, in the process of solving its impact or that the process of the affirmative does not get in the way of larger discussions of resolving humanism, especially if you're in line with creating a better world. Now, functional links, right? So more so about implementation or more materially close to the 1AC. Um, so AF, solvency, and debatability justify the link turn. If the link is based in the AF process or materially close to engaging the plan, you need to staticize the link and explain why the AF is unique and key to stall. You need to have a departure. Why is what they're critiquing about, what the affirmative could potentially replicate or be a part of um, not true? And where is the affirmative different? Why is the debatability of US debaters to having this discussion um, important um, in order to justify why you know the plan is good? And so that is going to be uniquely important. The perm. We're moving through this y'all, we're moving, is that the permutation should be thoughtfully constructed to maximize its utility in disproving mutual exclusivity, right? So don't just like throw some perm this, perm that, permutation do both, permutation do all, um, non-mutually exclusive parts of the permutation, permutation do the plan, permutation do the plan, the alter. You're just saying a lot of stuff, not really thinking what you mean. Sit down, really think and talk about what all these permutations look like and what level of the debate they are responding to. The next is that winning framework could mean that the negative has a high threshold to prove a link, which means that the permutation one meets the act's interpretation on framework and is the only option to reconcile the role of the ballot. And two, that there's a low risk of a link is proof of there's no mutually exclusivity between um, the two advocacies um, or that there's not a large impact to the fact that they are distinct. And lastly is that you need to frame the disad to the permutation um, from the negative as assuming a thesis claim the negative hasn't won yet and then answer any unique offense, so why they try to parse out distinction between all the literal, the, the dissets that they read, which honestly probably are more extensions of the theory, again, just put in a new place on um, the idea of combination or the idea of citation. And so just framing why the negative has to first win these theoretical impositions, but then if we win arguments on framework for how debates should be evaluated this is going to affect the kind of competition standards on the permutation we're in that thing we're here alt offense one two three one raise the alternative to a higher threshold implicates alt solvency and the evaluation of impacts two lack of alt solvency or vagueness has negative implications for the negative theory um establish to set the alternative in the context of debate and to what the world would look like post the alternative in a world where the plan is not passed. Three, get the negative to reveal how immaterial the alt is either in cross-sex, through their explanations of it, uh, through framework solely, and resolve that on the framework debate as a justification for why the negative model either reproduces its impacts 
and or why the AFS model is best to reconcile that tension. The 2AR, we've made it to the last slide, I believe. And that is the top of the 2AR should be the strongest, app, strongest offense, the AFS impacts. You need to make sure to have even if statements of what the negative can win, but why the affirmative wins. Focusing on the debatability and the specificity advantage of the affirmative versus the negative should be both defense and offense for resolving the theory and framework debate. And after that, once you've kind of framed up your best offense, what you have to win in order to win the debate, what the negative sets up that creates an impossible demand or reproduces their same offense, which means that the critique is probably not sans any ethical dilemmas, um, you funnel all of that through your line by line responses, because even if you drop something, it means it feels like you responded to it because you framed everything to fit into certain categories. And it makes life a lot easier for the 2AR because you're able to really sit down and explain the benefits of the 1AC as a heuristic and what that would look like in the world, right? And for yourself in the world, um, especially as the last speech. And I think that that is, yeah, that's the last speech. And so thank you all so much for watching and I look forward to talking to y'all in the Q&A.